Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Coding My Way In and let's get straight to business what I have been doing all week so something that I'm very excited for is that I was finally able to change a portion of my readme for the longest it said uh, learning HTML, CSS and JavaScript and now that I've been dabbling in React uh, I decided to change it and to be more in tune to what I'm doing now and as you can see um, you can see Tailwind CSS, so if you guys have been following the series, you guys know I've been working with it. But the most thing that I'm most excited for is these two, Node and Express.js. So, like I told you guys last week, uh, I'm I'm going to take I'm going to take a little break of the of the project uh, that I'm currently working, so I can dabble and learn about backend. So I'm going to use Node and Express.js because my main goal is to turn my Nissan project into a full stack application so the front end is like 95 percent done so i i was like you know what i've been seeing at the, looking at the same thing for like weeks and weeks let me take a break from the project and let me learn some of the tools that i will need in order for me to take this application to full stack so i'm learning currently i'm learning node and and then i'm going to start learning about express i i've heard that uh, you can start learning Express right away once you have like the the fundamentals of of Node. But I decided, you know what? Uh, I'm taking I'm currently taking this uh, crash course by uh, by tra by Traversy, which is a an, ironically is a Nissan ad. So so he's do he did a. The React crash course, which I took, and it helped me like really understand like the basics, and it was very uh, helpful uh, for me to start my project with using React and Tailwind. And now I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking his crash course for Node, and then I'm gonna take his uh, crash course for Express JS. So uh, I have everything like lined up. Wh what I'm going to learn afterwards to keep everything organized and everything making sense. So. Current, I still am not on Express, but I'm learning Node. I'm like I'm halfway the course, and before we keep going, uh, let me show you guys a little a little bit. I did two things this week. I was going over uh, my niece and experience code because I wanted to make sure that everything that was in the project, every line of JavaScript, I understood and I knew what it was doing, and I sat down and I made sure I understood everything. I, I, no, no, no rock was left unturned. I, I, I made sure to go over it line by line to make sure I understood everything that I was doing because it just doesn't make sense for me to keep pushing, uh, in the project and then it gets to a point that I get lost. So with my project, I know what everything is doing. And in one of those things, I came across, uh, a use effect hook that I was using to fetch the the form if you guys saw um there, there's a section for the the project that if you go um let me show you real quick so it makes sense what i'm saying i already have it on nullify so you go to the contact us form and uh, i have a js file for that so i have this form where is it is here the form data that's where so when you submit the form it goes here on the, in this mock uh, JSON server that I have, it's a mock, so it's, it's not a, a real server just yet. Reason why I'm learning Node and Express. So I was fetching the information of the of the how can I say of the of the form that, of the JSON file, and for some reason I kept looking at this effect hook, and I'm like, okay, I know what it's doing. It's fetching from the form, but I couldn't find anywhere in the component uh, of the contact us component where it was being used. And then eventually I'm like, it, it, it makes no sense me having this because I'm already using it on the app. I'm already doing the same thing on the app component, which is here. If you see this, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I was fetching uh, the form. And then I, I came to the conclusion that that, um, hook was doing absolutely nothing and then i was thinking okay 
why was that there in the first place? And and here's where I was thinking. It took me some time to understand, like, man, why I had this hook in the first in the first place? And then that's when I realized, oh, it's because I was first uh, fetching the the form from the contact us component, and once I was done doing that. I went ahead and started doing the same thing on the app component and I actually never got rid of this. So I never needed this in the first place. And that's when I realized and that shows the importance of going back on your code, understanding what everything does. Because you might find little things that you're like, oh, I actually don't need this. Or, oh, maybe I could do this differently. In this case, I actually didn't need this because again, I'm already doing this. I'm already fetching the form, the JSON file from my app component. So that was that for the project but other than that other than going over the code i i didn't do nothing uh on the project at all um and then i decided to move on to start learning um node and again this is a crash course that i'm using in the and then i'm going to follow up with this one the express crash course from uh, Brad, uh traversy media i really recommend it um so currently what i'm learning with node I'm learning like th these little things that I never like took into consideration or even paid attention to, but uh, I'm having fun with it actually. Uh, I was I learned the uh, different ways to import uh, files when you're doing because there's two ways. There's common JS modules and then you have ES modules, which is what we do now, the modern way to do it. So he was like giving examples of how to do the common JS, and then eventually he moved on from that and started doing it now we on the building a, a server and is using the ES models uh, mo modules which is what we use to import and, 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 and export files and stuff so I was learning uh, the basics of node and then we were uh, learning how to use um, some commands so I, I learned about uh, npm init and it was to like initialize the file and i was able to do you add the the description uh the main the this one uh it, it says start but you can actually turn it into it, it could be start it could be test it could be um dev you can change this and as you can see i put the author easy the mit license and something that i noticed was that Every time we were doing an, an example, for example, let me, uh, uh, how do I do that? Ah, node and index. So when I do this, it gives me the node index because it's, it's the index file here. And then what's going on here is these are posts, which are in this one. So this post is being passed here. And then what we're trying to do is we're also trying to get not only the object, but we're also trying to get the length to see how many do we have. That's why you get uh, the the object, but then you see here post length three. And how do we get this post length three? Uh, very simple. A template string, we put it here post length, which is this. And then the get post length is here. At the end here, post, which is this. And then that length. So that way you get the individual amount of uh, objects that you have. That's why you get the object and then post length three why because one object two object three object so that's how it's done um but something that i was finding very annoying was like every time we made a change um we kept uh having to get out the server and got having to go back in in and out in and out I'm like man this is like annoying and then eventually we came across he, he teaches about uh, uh, a package called nodemon uh and that's what it does. A node one literally uh, immediately uh, refreshes your your server, so you don't have to go in and out. All you have to do is just uh, take care of the refresh button, and it works perfectly. So if we do this, uh, and not only that, we also change the the environment file and in the port. So instead of using uh, node server, we just do node. No, npm start. npm start. And then it should give us the port, and we got it. We catch it here. So localhost, let me do this one. This 8000. So that way you're able to see what you're looking at here. So 
uh, you put the service code, it could be 404, 200, 500, whatever, but the contact type and then the content, content type, you decide what it's going to be. In my case, it was a text HTML, but it could be an, um, uh, uh, an object. So, for example, here, you could do it. Uh, let me see. Where is it? I can do. I can show it here. Let me see. See here, you you see that we changed the the node server because it was a first node month server, and then we added the environment. But this could be anything. This could be uh, um, uh, an object, and a good example you can see is here. Um, and you go to let me see where is it I put it in the commits so the contact type for example here you see here uh, the contact type was application in JSON so if we change this uh, it shows an object of the server and here since we changed it uh, to text HTML and we put a HTML uh, it shows the HTML and let me do it again so you guys can see it so it can make more sense because probably it can be confusing for new people taking care of this so you see I made that change right and you see this and as you can see the moment I did that this right away fi finished and now all I had to do is this the moment I clicked now I get this and now if I go back uh, boom to text this refreshes again and then all I have to do is this so the Nodemon uh, NPM helps you do that so you don't have to keep continuously going in and out Another thing that I learned was that, as you can see, uh, uh, when I'm taking crash courses, the way that I do my commits are very differently. I, I use learned, and then I make like these big ones uh, comments, but I do it on purpose so I know what I'm doing. So if I ever have to go back, I know what to look for. And I learned the importance uh, of the the package JSON, and then I understood finally what is this for. This is literally just has the information of the previous version so everything is maintained and everything uh, keeps working without breaking so I always wonder what was the point of this but I finally learned what the pa package lock JSON is for the other thing that I learned was get ignore which is something that I always ignored because every time I start a project it's just there but I made a mistake that I was pushing some code and by accident I pushed the node node modules and I remember seeing it on my on my GitHub repo, and I'm like, "What is even there in the first place?" And that's what I learned that that's the purpose of Git ignore. So you write, for example, node modules, and then what it does, you push the code, it stays on your local machine, but it doesn't go to the repo. And then another thing that I learned was environment. So the way that environment is used and the the purpose of it is like so you can hide like important things such as like the API keys and things of that nature and uh, the way that you do it uh, you put any sensitive information that you don't want outside you put in a environment file that AMV and then to make sure you don't push the changes to your github repo you put it to on the get ignore so all I have to do is just dot EMV that's all I have to do and now I can put any changes here anything any information like an API key that I don't want other users to see It'll remain locally, but it won't go uh, to the repo. And very simple, the way it is used uh, as of right now, I put port equals 8000. So when you go to the server, I don't have to write um, port 8000. So because previously I had, instead of this, I had this. But you don't want to show it to the public, right? And the real world application wouldn't work. So by doing this in, uh, in the EMV, Core equals 8000 then I can pass it as a variable and then I just pass it in as port port and all you see as a user is port if you go into into the code so it makes things more safe uh, and and more realistic as a real-world application so uh, I know this was probably not too exciting for some people but I'm very excited learning more about the back end because again that's my goal become a full stack developer and I'll, I'm definitely going back to the project, but I just want to make sure I learn and get my foundations going with Node and Express. And after that, I'm going to start learning about SQL, uh, PS SQL, Postgres, 
and then I'll go back to the project. So that's what I got for you guys. Thank you and see you in the next.